We're going to talk about three main strategies that you can use with potential ATM business locations. Hey there, my name is Carrie Buck. I've been an independent ATM business owner since 2009, and I've been an ATM business mentor since 2011. And that's why I teach people just like you how to start and grow your own profitable ATM business that will provide you with consistent monthly passive income and big chunks of cash in small time frames. Now, why would you want consistent monthly passive income and big chunks of cash in small time frames? Well, it's going to be different for each person. But a lot of times folks are wanting to get out of their nine to five jobs. They're wanting to supplement their retirement or maybe this is their retirement, right? <laughs> um, some folks are wanting to uh, not invest hundreds of thousands of dollars and instead invest tens of thousands of dollars, right? And then there's folks that are uh, finally ready to put their money to work for them instead of always working for their money. So there's different reasons and you might check off multiple boxes, but it's going to be different for each person. If you'd like me to help you start and grow your own profitable ATM business, then I invite you to go to atmtrainingvideo.com or just click the link in the description. Do me a favor right now, please click that little button right there and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you hit that bell and, and click all so you're notified uh, every time I post a video. And see the smile? Do me a favor, give me some thumbs up, give me some likes for this video. And of course, as usual, if you have any questions, you can post them below. Or if you have ideas for a future video, post that below too. All right, so there's gonna be these three strategies, all right? But before I share them with you, I want you to know that the strategy that you choose is gonna be dependent upon a bunch of things. The type of location it is, how far it is from your home, uh, how much cash that you have available, just all, all kinds of things, right? So there's, all kinds of things that you're going to take into consideration before determining which one of these strategies that you want to use. Okay. All right. So with that said, the first strategy, this is the most popular one. This is the one everybody thinks of automatically when it comes to the ATM business. And that is you, let's say you go to a restaurant and you're talking to the business owner and they want an ATM. You guys agree to put an ATM in there, but you are going to buy the ATM. You're going to service and maintain the ATM and you we're going to fill the ATM with your cash. That scenario is 100% hands off for that business owner, right? For that restaurant owner, that's 100% hands off. You're doing everything. You're making 100% of the surcharge. But then, of course, it's up to you, you know, how much of that surcharge, if any, you want to give as profit sharing for that business owner, okay? That's the main strategy that we all know of. That's what most of my machines have been, you know, since 2009. And the majority of them are right now as well. Second strategy. Um, same scenario. This is a restaurant owner. You're talking to them. And um, you figure out that, um, you know, they're open to filling the ATM with their cash. So you buy the ATM. You're going to service and, you know, service the machine if there's any issues. But they are going to use their cash to fill the ATM machine. In that scenario, you can do a 50-50 split or whatever, you know, you guys agree to. I don't see anything wrong with doing a 50-50 split personally because chances are you're not going to really have to be there to do anything, right? Sure, you know, if there's service issues, you have to go check it out and fix it. But these ATM machines that we're dealing with, they're workhorses and they don't have a lot of issues, you know. Um, we have some machines that we've been using since 2009 and they haven't had any issues. And that, you know, I'm not talking about having to upgrade for EMV and stuff like that. I mean, like ongoing type of issues, you know what I'm saying? Um, so that's a, a very viable uh, situation. And I would love to have way more business owners do that. And, you know, we have a couple that do that now, especially since we moved to the beach. Okay. Um, now, so that's strategy number two. Uh, strategy number three, all right, this is, okay, you go and you talk to that business owner and they're like, yeah, I'd rather have my own machine and, you know, and, and charge what I want as far as surcharge or whatnot. So what do you do? You sell them an ATM machine. Sell them an ATM machine. You can charge more for it because you're going to program and install it because they have no idea what they're doing, right? So you're going to be their point of contact. You're going to get their ATM. You're going to program and install it for them. All right. And then, and then of course they're using their own cash to fill the machine, but 
they don't know how to service this machine. They have no idea what they're doing. So you can offer one of two things. So you're going to offer service. Okay. And you can say, Hey, we can do service on an as needed basis. And then you pay me 250 bucks a pop to come out here and fix your machine or, or deal with your machine. Um, and then, uh, you know, they'll, they'll probably be like, yeah, say, or we can do a service contract. And the way that works is you're going to give me X amount per transaction. And then my service fee for any time you need me to come out here is covered. Of course, you still have to pay for parts, right? So let's say, um, so we, for instance, I have a scenario where I sold an ATM to a business and I get a dollar per transaction for a service contract, right? And you can charge whatever. I mean, that's, you can charge 25 cents a transaction, dollar transaction, whatever they'll agree to. You know, so a dollar per transaction. We've had this ATM. We've sold that ATM to them probably like two or three years ago. I've never been there since we've installed it. Never. Never been there. I've gotten two calls from them. First call was a uh, service problem. And I walked them through fixing it over the phone. Okay. Second call was a customer dispute. I walked them through the information over the phone that they needed, and then I submitted the dispute for them, which they won, right? That's it. So um, scenario number two and scenario number three are going to require none of your uh, capital, like ongoing capital inside the machine, and they're going to require very little of your time. Strategy number two and number three are super attractive, you know, at, you know sometimes, at times. Um, two is my favorite, actually between you and I. Number two is my favorite strategy. Um, so does that make sense? Those three different strategies. Number one is just the normal one. You're paying for the machine. You're servicing the machine. You are um, using your cash to put in the machine. You're making 100% of the surcharge. But uh, of course, you can determine if if any, how much of the energy you want to give uh, for profit sharing to the business owner. And strategy number two is you're kind of doing a little deal with the business owner. So you pay for the machine, you service the machine, but the um, business owner is going to use their cash to fill the machine. And then you guys are, uh, are, going, to, are going to agree to an appropriate split um, of the surcharge. Usually it's 50-50 for something like that, but you can create any um, split that you want that you and that business owner are agreeable to. And then the third strategy is um, you just sell the business owner ATM, they uh, get 100% of the surcharge, they um, determine what the surcharge is, they fill the machine with their cash, technically they're supposed to service the machine, but you add extra to the cost of the machine so you can install it and program it for them, and then you offer them a service contract where you uh, can take a portion of the surcharge fee as an on-call service person. All right, makes sense. Hopefully that that all made sense. Okay, if you have any questions, post it below. Do me another favor. Post below right now and tell me of those three strategies, which is your favorite? Which sounds most interesting to you? Okay, I like number two, and then I like number one. I mean, I don't mind selling a machine to somebody, but you know, I want to make sure I keep getting the ongoing cash flow because I've sold several machines to business owners uh, and. You know, I only do like a handful of them do the, the monthly service contract with. You know, some of them are like, nah, it's fine. We'll call you if we have an issue. Um, and these machines, are, they're workhorses. They hardly have any issues, you know. Um, so let me know below what's, what's your favorite strategy that you like that you've heard. And then, of course, any questions, post them below. Any future ideas for videos, post them below. Do not forget to like this. I don't know if you listened in the beginning of the video, but now, please, like this video, click on that, subscribe to this channel, hit that bell notification, make sure you select all so every time I post the video, you get notified. And of course, if you'd like me to help you start and grow uh, your own ATM business, go to atmtrainingvideo.com or click the link in the description. All right, this is Carrie Buck signing off. I hope you have a great day and may you live happily off of passive income.